Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back here on FanDuel TV. It is Thursday, which I think is our Friday this week. It's the math that we like to do here. Uh, my name is Michelle. I am joined by Stadium Insider Sham Sharania. Chandler P with the backwards hat. You're going to piss off some old folks, Chandler. And <laughs> Lou Will there on the end. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? We got to start with Shams because Shams, what what did you post? What is that thing with the glass and the breaking? Yeah, that, there it that's... Is. Uh, Wow. Yeah, I mean Chandler gets Chandler gets to go to cool golf tournaments. I take these out, you know, random opportunities. The Chicago Fire, the MLS team here, they invited me out. They have this break the glass ceremony uh, before the game with the alarm sound. It's at Soldier, Soldier Field. Uh, you know, attendance. I guess I guess they were expecting me to bring all the attendance there. I, I could not fit the bill there, but uh, it was a cool opportunity. I appreciated it, and uh, it went well. So yeah, did they win I'm, at I'm least? Happy I got to do What's it. Up? Uh, I, you know, there was other stuff in the NBA going on. I couldn't see the score. Oh, oh you know what? You're, oh, didn't stay. You're right. By the way, before we move on to the NBA, tell me about your jacket. I feel like there's some fashion happening here we need to discuss. Yeah, that's 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 the jacket that they uh, fortunately gave me. Uh, it was actually really kind of chilly wow. yesterday, but uh, I had a bomber on anyway, but they gave me that jacket. Snug jacket. Great fit. Fancy. Uh, I appreciate them swagging me out. So, uh, you know, it was a great experience, and I appreciate them for that. Okay, I like this. I like this. Yep, I do too, and I love this jacket. It's very, very cool. Um, oh, they lost one. Zi- see, it's all right. It's not Sham's fault because he had things to do. There's nothing things for me to, to see. On. There was no scores for me to see. I, I, I was going to say mean, sometimes you, know, you can sit through a soccer on, game. <laughs> there's there's stuff going on. Celtics doing what they needed to do. No shock there. They took care of the Cavs. Uh, Win the series 4-1. Tatum leads the team. It's a 113-98 victory. He had 25-10-9. Al Horford had himself quite the evening. 22 points, 15 rebounds. Evan Mobley had a career-high 33 points and 7 rebounds. But remember, Cleveland, no Donovan Mitchell, no Jared Allen, no Karis LeVert. Um, I will say this, Shams. Look, the Cavs took another step forward, which I suppose we can look at as the positive. They lost in the conference semis. So, off-season ideas moves what are we thinking is going to happen here big picture entering this summer the Cavs are going to seriously evaluate the fit between Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and rival executives I've spoken to even this week in Chicago at the combine they expect that the Cavaliers ultimately may have to choose one of them and of course the Cavs will be able to offer Donovan Mitchell a four-year almost 209 million dollar contract extension this summer they want him to stay And I'm told if Mitchell does decide to stay long-term, Garland's representation, they would have a conversation about the potential of a new home for him. He's a one-time All-Star, but his his field goal attempts, his usage percentages, a lot has fallen for him since Donovan Mitchell arrived to this roster. And there are multiple teams obviously monitoring Donovan Mitchell, but also Darius Garland, and if he becomes available in the marketplace and then you have Evan Mobley, who did play a lot better at the five position. He's going to be in line for a massive contract, rookie contract extension this summer. And Jared Allen, he didn't play really the majority of this postseason after having that rib injury midway through that first round series against Orlando. His future is very much up in the air. And this is all with the backdrop of the future of J.B. Bickerstaff, Chandler's friend. He's had some pretty good success since taking over for John Beeline about four years ago. But his future and his job status, I'm told, is in serious jeopardy. The Cavs are going to take some time, multiple days. Uh, It could be some time that they take before they make a final decision on J.B. Bickerstaff. Like, what's the right move? Is there a better coach out there? There's obviously frustrations around the roster toward J.B. Bickerstaff at different points. But at the end of the day, they're going to need to make the best decision for their franchise. Does that mean Donovan Mitchell's back? Does that mean Darius Garland is back? Which one do you pick if you have to choose? Is J.B. Bickerstaff back? And this is all largely the expectations Donovan Mitchell has for this franchise. And last season, I'm told he was irritated that there was a celebratory atmosphere by just getting to the playoffs. And this year, after they win in the first round, it was, we should have much higher goals than winning just in the first round. But listen, this was their first first round win this season since 1993 without LeBron James. So this is a pretty good feat for the organization, but they've set themselves up with high expectations and a high amount of pressure going into the summer. 
That is hey, Chandler, a lot. Let me, let, me ask a, let me ask you a question, Chandler, because I'm not well versed in Cavaliers drama, right? So it looks like they have a lot of talent. It looks like they have a, 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 a solid coach. They have the fan base behind them. They lost to the team that probably anybody was going to lose to. Everybody had Boston being predicted coming out of the East. What, what, what the hell is the problem? Like, I don't understand why yeah. there's so much turmoil. I'm, I'm not understanding. See, what's funny is, Lou, what was their realistic expectations? Like, you think you're going to go into this series and beat the Celtics? Do you think you're going to win the East uh, with this powerhouse Boston Celtics team with Milwaukee making the move for Damian Lillard with Joel Embiid and that Sixers team when they're fully healthy? So my whole point is, when you have this team, you have, you're have you building something. You're young. You have guys like Evan Mobley, Darius Garland. And the, the big disconnect in that locker room, everything I know, is Donovan Mitchell. So if I'm on the if I'm on their side of if, if he's not happy, if he's the one that's kind of ruffling all the feathers, if he doesn't have the relationship with the players, Darius Garland and the coaching staff, I, I think you have to look to move him before you blow up this team because they have enough with him and they almost have enough without him, depending on what they get back from him. Cause he's going to, he's going to bring back a haul. So if you can sign and trade him and you can bring other assets that fit with Darius Garland, that fit with the pieces that they already have, cause they have the talent. And when they were healthy this year, they could compete with anybody. They went on stretches, but uh, like, but like you're asking Lou, like, how the hell would this team beat the Boston Celtics, let alone without three of their top eight players? It doesn't even make sense. Right. So if they're having these thoughts and conversations now, they probably have been having them for a long time because there's new damn well they weren't going to win this series. So I yeah. think when you have a disgruntled star like this and all the drama surrounded by him, how do you bring him back with these teammates that aren't getting along with him? How do you bring him back with his coaching staff? These, these problems from this season aren't just going to be forgotten next season. And looking at the coaching search that the Lakers are doing, who's a better option than J.B. Bickerstaff? There is slim pickings out there right now with a good coach, unless you want to totally trade Donovan Mitchell, rebuild this from the ground up, and bring in a J.J. Redick type to grow with this young team. They don't have to do that, though. They're good enough to not do that and not rebuild and compete next year. They went to the conference semifinals. What were your realistic expectations this year? To win a championship? No. To beat the Celtics in a series? No. So so, so what, where, why, where's the panic? But I'm just yeah, okay, watching so like how they were building, how yeah. Donovan Mitchell, he's encouraging Garland like to make shots, shooting shots. They're bear hugging each other after the game. And it, it looks like these are positive stepping stones for an organization who's trying to find its footing um, since the exit of, of LeBron. And you're finally here on the doorsteps. Why, why mess with that now? Why, why, why bother with that now? I'm confused. <laughs> But Lou, because mm -hmm. that's that's all fake. That's all that that's all. Donovan Mitchell hasn't been happy all season long. So yeah, he's being a good teammate. Yeah, he's showing he's that good. he cares on the sideline. But that, it's not real. Everything that everyone hears is he's not happy. He doesn't get along with people in the locker room. No one likes to JB Biggerstaff, which is crazy to me. And I will say he's my guy. I love him. I've never had him as a head coach. So when you're a head coach, you have a different role. You know, Lou. You have those homies, really your different. assistant coaches. You'll go out with them. You'll hang with them. When you get the head coaching job, it could be slightly different. So I can't speak on JB as being my head coach. As my assistant coach, he's the best I've ever had. And he filled it. And so so there's clearly a disconnect. And when there's a disconnect with the coach and the best player on the team, it's a real problem. And usually one has to go. So wait, when you say it's all fake, like the hugs, are like it's just good acting. So if that's the case, then is the is the is the given then that you do have to move Donovan Mitchell? There is no working around it if it's that bad. That's that's my that's my point. Obviously, he's their best player. He's their everything. So usually that helps. Usually that usually that trumps everything. But now when you're talking about your head coach, your second best player, other role that's players everything. in that locker room where there's disconnect, it's like, okay, how much yeah. are you willing to give in just to re-sign Donovan Mitchell to not still not happy? You can't forget about these issues this year. So my point is like lose. They're right there. They, they don't need to rebuild. They don't need to blow this up, and make a dumpster fire. They are right there. They have the talent. They are young. Every every other team right now, the Celtics, they're built to win now. The Milwaukee Bucks, they're built, they're even more so to built now. Joel Embiid's health is in question. The Cleveland Cavaliers can make a real run with or without Donovan Mitchell next year. So I would look to shop him and see what you can get. If not, he's a hell of a talent and he's a great player. We all know that. But 
the talent can only get you so far. If there's chemistry issues, if there's personal relationship issues, if there's no trust and a disconnect between your best player and your head coach or your two best players, it's never going to work, especially when you've got other great teams in that conference that you're going to have to go through. Can I ask you a question, Beetle, Chandler? You know what you... else? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, like our, our guest that'll, that'll be here later on, he can attest to this. We got along perfectly. Teammates, everything perfectly. There was a disconnect with he and the coaching staff. So sometimes ah. when you have an issue with the coach, but you're cool with your teammates, and you're like, listen, mm -hmm. fellas, we're going to go out and we compete. I'm with you guys, but it's no way I can work with this guy ever again after this. I get that. You know, sometimes you have that, sometimes you have that disconnect, and that's possibly <laughs> what's happening here. I get that. <laughs> Shams. Yeah, I mean, on top of that disconnect, I mean, Chandler eloquently put all of that. But, uh, I mean, the, 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 the crux, bigger picture aspect of all that is, I think you have an organization that made it to the second round for the first time since 2018. They won. They went to playoffs back to back years with home court advantage. This is a this is an organization that feels prideful about what they've accomplished, what they've done the last couple of years, how they've been building. I mean, this thing really started with Darius Garland and Evan Mobley as your two young cornerstones, and then you get Jared Allen, then you get Dominic Mitchell, then you feel like you're building something. But the the, the issue is, and and the difference of opinion, I guess, on where this all stands is. Donovan Mitchell expects more. And I, I've had te right. teammates tell me all season he wants this team to compete for a championship. He wants his team to aim for higher than just the first round. And that's kind of also where the disconnect is at, where you have an organization that feels prideful of, of what they've done, how they've been building, and a guy like Donovan Mitchell who feels like, yo, we should not be just content and happy with a first round win or getting to five games against the Celtics, who are obviously the prohibitive favorites to get to the finals this year out of the East. We like we can't be content with just that. So how do they get there? How do, is the, is there a middle ground? And if there's not, who goes? And that's what Kobe Altman, their GM, is gonna have to hmm. figure out. I don't know if anybody wants to tackle this GM question, but okay. So let's say JB goes and Donovan stays. But if you keep Donovan, do you have enough to go get whatever this mysterious piece is that will now put them in position to have, as he would like, higher expectations? I mean, what is actually realistic here? Because it, it feels like there are a lot of little moving options, but it's a little overwhelming at the same time. Well, here's the problem, too. You're not Cleveland's not a free agency destination. So Donovan Mitchell is most likely the best player that you're going to you're going to have on your team. You can now I, I, if you can shop him, you trade him, you can get two or three good players. And like I said, they have enough with Jared Allen, with Mobley, with Struess, with all the with the with Darius Garland. If they now put two or three more rotational players with that, they can almost be a better team than with them with this disconnect. So I think there's room to make a jump. I just think we first you have to handle the locker room. You have to handle the chemistry because you can have all the talent in the world. If you're not vibing, if you're not getting along, if you're not willing to play as hard as you can every single night for your coach and for the guy next to you, it's not going to work. I don't, hear, I don't care how good Donovan Mitchell is. And what's weird about this is he's everything I know about Donovan Mitchell, he's not a bad guy. He's likable. People right. love him. We have mutual friends. So I don't think this is like a, a negative towards Donovan Mitchell. I just think something happened in that locker room where there's too many issues to so, so the only thing left to do is to is to move is to make a move. So Kobe Altman's got a lot of decisions to make this summer, but my personal opinion is no need to panic. You are in solid shape. You are right there. You have the talent. And then the coaching front, my question is, Shams, like who the hell who do they hire? Like are, are they, who, 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 who's out there available? JJ Reddick. Woohoo. He's sure. everywhere. But like, fine. And, but like, you know what? You're getting anybody better. Look, it's so many of these. Like, where is he going to go? This is the best case scenario for him off the top of my head, right? Like, you go to New York, you're going to be a, mm -hmm. a sidekick to Bronson. Julius Randle is going to come back. You go to Orlando, that is, that is Banchero's basketball team. Even if you come to Atlanta, it's still Trey Young's team. Okay, see, all of these teams already have their young superstars, their, their, their one, number one guy. So if you're trying to be a one guy, there's not a lot of scenarios you can leave Cleveland and become that. You're going to be a wingman to somebody who's already put some stepping stones in place with an organization. And so, I mean, where else do you go that you're not going to be the sidekick? So for him wanting to strive for more, it's best you build it where you are um, as it stands, opposed yeah. to trying to go somewhere else and fit in because you're gonna you're gonna be the B option on 90% of the teams that's out there available for you. 
The grass isn't always greener on the other side. You know this, Lou. You think everything's not peachy on, on, on your town and your city and organization. You go somewhere else and it's worse. So I personally would love to see them work this out because I do think they have enough to compete next year. Let's not forget how good they were, those stretches where they were all fully oh, healthy. Yeah. They were they were really, really good. So let's let's not panic, Cleveland. You, you, you're right there. They also did win a bunch of games, too, when Donovan wasn't playing. So this is a very confusing situation to be in. And I'm glad it's not our jobs, guys, because I would be stressed out at night. Um, they were the losers of the game, however, and they are now out of the playoffs. The Celtics did win. So let's talk about them for a little bit here. Conference finals, this would be the third straight season, uh, six times in eight of the last eight. Of the last eight. It's, a, it's an impressive run. I don't know who wants to tackle it first, Lou. I was very negative about it yesterday. Uh, I'm all ears. Tell me why it's impressive. Consistent. Consistent. They're, they've been in a mix for, you know, six out of eight seasons, making it to the conference finals, you know, and, and I agree with the sentiments of Jalen Brown that he said at the start of the season. This year's championship or bust. You know, they're tired of getting just close enough to be a good basketball team. You know, they want to conquer the hill. Hmm. They want to be on top of that on top of that mountaintop and and, you know, and, and celebrate a real win opposed to just getting to the conference finals and and having success in that way, you know, and so very consistent, very impressive. And they've done it with the core group of guys. You know, they've done it with, for the most part, the same group of guys with, with a little turnover here and there. But other than that, you know, Jalen Brown has been a part of all of these runs uh, with bringing Jason Tatum in right after that. And, and so they figured it out on how to keep chemistry going on how to plug guys in and continue to have success. So very impressive run. But, you know, like I said, they're in a situation now where you know, good isn't good enough. They got to be great. They got to come away with a ring now. Yeah. What's interesting to me, we're talking about this Celtics, a super team a couple of shows ago. It's like they have been very, very good. I mean, making six of eight, uh, you know, conference mm -hmm. finals. That's very impressive. They haven't won one championship. So it, it, it's they haven't won a championship since 2008. So so it's it's as good as they've been, as consistent of a great of a regular season team. And they won those first two. They are so talented and they have set the bar so high that they have made a championship or bust because we know they have enough, right? They have the yep. best starting five. They defend, they score. They have an absolute stud in Jason Tatum. They have another absolute stud that can go and be a number one option. Most other places in Jalen Brown, they have the best guard defender in Drew Holiday, they have the best role player in Derek White. I think for them to actually win the championship and beat one of these teams in the Western Conference, they need Przingis, they need his shooting, they need his ability to stretch the floor and play that two-man game. But yeah, this team is so good and they've shown us how dominant they can be that just getting to the conference finals is enough. Getting to the NBA finals is enough. So when you have this talent, when you you set these expectations so high, you have to win it all this year. And if they don't, listen, is it a failure? Yeah, internally, oh, wow. you, you are playing for a championship. Do they blow it up? Do they? No, I think they're going to keep this core together. Now, Missoula might be gone. Some other little pieces might be gone. But for the most part, they have their team for the next four to five, six years. They just need to get get that big championship. And once they win one, I wouldn't be surprised if they would. They're going to win another one. Like they're they Whoa. are that good. They are that good. So and they're straight up cakewalking to the finals with the with the teams that they're playing here. Yeah, that part does help. Uh, funny you said it's not a failure if they don't win because Rajon Rondo says it is a failure if they don't win the championship this year. And again, it's tough because you got you got Denver possibly lurking over on the other side. Uh, it's always going to be somebody tough over there, Lou. You agree with Rajon, though? Failure if you don't win at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree because this is a sentiment that, that they've expressed. They feel like it'll be a failure without coming away with the title. You know, they, they, they lost to Denver a year ago, and they feel like they're a better team since then, and they feel like they're, they have enough to get over, that, get over that hump and get over that edge. And so Rajon Rondo is only echoing what – you know, internally what the Boston Celtics have said themselves, you know, this is championship or bust. We're tired of, like I said, we're tired of just being an Eastern Conference Finals winning basketball team. We got to get to the mountaintop. So this is a fair assessment. Shams, Kristaps Porzingis, he gets a nice little rest. He's had a nice little rest uh, already. Are we expecting to see him in the next series? It's still unclear. He is doing more on the court, which is good. He's moving around. He's shooting. He's he's doing some pick and roll stuff on the court. So he's starting to do more and more. But you have to be careful with that cast. And he's about two and a half weeks in as of right now. He may need more time. I think the Celtics will see 
Uh, they still have to wait for the, for the finish of the other series to see who they face in the conference finals. But right now, the Celtics will be patient with Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, they need him for the finals. That's something that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see who they play in the Eastern Conference Finals. But uh, if they are without him, I think the expectation still within Boston is that they need to get to the finals. They need to beat whoever's next with or without Porzingis. And then that's where the real championship or bus expectation starts come finals. That cakewalk situation is really coming in handy for his uh, his rest time. Well, well, well done. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will be joined by Blake Griffin. Oh, he's all retired and stuff. That's next. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. season six-time all-star five-time all nba and now a retired old man blake griffin joins the show this is awesome so stoked to have you here i'm a little concerned however uh because apparently after this show ends immediately you and our dysfunctional friend chandler over there are are y'all getting on the same plane or going to the same place talk to me um yeah, a little bit of both, I think. I, I, you know, oh, as of now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's you know? like it's seven in the morning, Chandler. It's a retirement the tour. Way. What do you want me to do? We got we got nothing to do. I am Wait, not Blake. kidding. I asked Blake. I said, "Hey, what are the chances we want to have a little slumber party and we want to do this interview together? I want to do it stepbrother <laughs> style, where we sat right behind me and we interviewed you guys. I, I wanted so badly to do that, oh. but it didn't work out." I kind of would have I actually thought y'all were going to pull it off. That's what I was expecting at first. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. By the way, do pilots know who's about to get on their planes? Like, is there a poor guy sitting there somewhere waiting on the plane and then you two are going to show up? Um. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a fuck manifest or there's like, you know. They but I don't know. Flight manifest. Yeah. Like, well, can they know the names? But do they have, they have no yeah. idea what's headed their way in as far as disasters? They, they, they got two, names two other guys. Oh, it so is international. Parsons, Blake Griffin, could be two other guys. Who knows? It's 100% it's common, two other guys. Common name, it's it's very common, common name. names. I know six other dudes named those things. Uh, you announced the retirement and a lot of a lot of players, a lot of Celtics players begging you to return. Was there ever a split second moment when you thought, okay, maybe one more run? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. I, I, I gave it some <laughs> thought last summer. Um, kind of going into the off season, I feel like I knew, I think I was, I was, I was done, but I wanted to make sure, um, I wanted to give it to like the season started to see if I had like that itch, if I still wanted to get back out there. And ultimately just after so many years, like a lot of surgeries, a lot of injuries, um, it was time to, it was time to hang it up and, and, and sort of start that next challenge. So, um, once I knew the decision was, was right, I haven't looked back, but, um, mm-hmm. I kind of took, took my time announcing the retirement for sure. And when you announced it, it was, a, it was actually heartfelt and, um, people who know you and have followed your humorous career, I, I maybe expected a little something more dry, more sarcastic. How'd you end up on heartfelt? I, I wanted to give like the respect, uh, that it deserves, you know, when you retire, when you do something your whole life, I, I felt like I wanted to give the, the respect that, that, um, that I, I gave the game of basketball, uh, when I played, you know, and how I approached it. So, um, it was hard. I had, I had a lot of ideas. I had one, I was going to, I was going to record a video, like recreating the uh, dunk contest where I like take off and just slam into the side of IKEA. And then just the words "Father Time's undefeated" uh, comes on the screen, and then, um, I, I thought about that. I had a couple of a couple other ideas, Good. but I was just like, you know what? Let's just put it out, get it over with. I don't want it to make it too much of a show, you know. Fair enough. Like, you're no doubt Hall of Famer. I will go to bat to that any day of the week. Have you thought about who will induct you and what team you? Obviously, it's got to be the Clippers, right? It's got it's got to be the Clippers. This is easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did. I spent nine years there, you know, um, we had uh, not ultimate success, but we had a lot of success. I mean, you know, uh, we were sort of part of that team that, that, that those, those teams that sort of transitioned them to, to having, you know, a little bit more regular success or being a little, at least being a little bit more respected around the league. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, after nine years, I think that that's that's the one that makes the most sense. I can give a pretty good speech oh. if you need to one. Oh, is this, is this uh, all right, let's hear it. What, what, your opening <laughs> yeah, start remark? it. Your opening remark, just, just. Blake Griffin, number 32 in your program. All right, we'll talk about it. We'll oh, about my it. Lord. <laughs> Damn it. Why would you put me on the spot? No, I'm sorry. Real, I'm sorry. real start. <laughs> Blake, speaking of the Clippers, uh, those Lob City teams use CP3. Um, obviously, DeAndre Jordan, you guys had some incredible memories, uh, incredible moments. What was, what was the most, I guess, fun moments? What, was, what were your favorite times there uh, from, that, from that era? Um, I mean, it's kind of a kind of a weird answer, just given the fact that we we didn't reach the pinnacle. Um, but just like those moments, like in the playoffs, man, when you're down ten or you're down whatever, you're on the road. You go, you have to go in and win a road game, uh, and we got it done. There was one year where we won multiple times, like on the road, and like those road wins, going into Oklahoma City when Katie got his MVP trophy and got a win there, like those feelings after that, and how it brings the team together um was a lot of fun but man we had fun we had a fun group um like I think a lot was said like towards the end that nobody liked each other and there was riffs but like man like I ran into CP the other day um and you know I talked to JJ Jamal all the DJ all these guys all the time and it's it's all it's all love and, it, and it's um it's fun just because we get to kind of reminisce on, on on those good times. So even off the court, man, we had a we had a great time, and and I look back at those those years with fond memories. That's it. What's crazy is even even other teams would watch those games. Like I remember, I was a player in the NBA, but I would make sure if they were on TV, I was watching that squad. So it was so much fun to watch. Yeah, man, it was it was fun. It was kind of like one of those things. Every night you just didn't know, like CP is doing CP things, and then DeAndre became that person who like nobody wanted to jump with him and for some reason people would uh and and he would catch everybody and it was like it was so fun to watch like up close and personal him him doing that jamal would come in and cross somebody over he was getting six man of the years jj was had some of his best years there um it was just a it was a it was a fun time PG, are you surprised you guys never won a championship? Do you feel like you guys are the best trio never to win a championship? Uh, I don't know if I could say the best trio. I mean, I, I honestly I have to go look at, you know, some of those other teams. Uh, surprise? No, I mean, uh, like, you, you definitely feel like you're capable of winning a championship. You go into every season, you know, with that that's your goal, obviously. Uh, and, and if you're any sort of realistic person, you know that we had a chance. Um, but surprise, no, because it takes a lot to win a championship. Like sometimes you have to get a little bit lucky. You have to be healthy at the right time. Like, you know, if, 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 if Katie and, and Clay don't get hurt against Toronto, Toronto doesn't have one. I don't think like that. That's, that's what it takes sometimes is like everybody being healthy. And part of that is your preparation part of that's all the stuff that everybody does. But, um, you know, I, I think surprise is probably isn't the right word, but, um, we definitely had that expectation. Um, so so a little bit let down for sure. Yeah, because uh, Dante Jones, he had, he had said recently he felt those teams that failed because of um, immaturity. Would you agree, disagree? What what would be your response to that? In, in Dante terms from the top group? row? Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I actually kind of completely disagree. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, maybe early on, but I don't know. I don't think that we were ready to win a championship. Like our, our first year together, we lost, we beat Memphis in the first round, lost to San Antonio. We weren't ready. Second year, we lost to Memphis. I mean, they're they're a good team. Like that, maybe that year, but the next year is it was injuries. We had mental lapses that I don't think were due to immaturity. I think sometimes that just happens. Um, so, I, I mean, sure, I guess I, I could agree with him on two years when DeAndre and I were twenty one and twenty two. <laughs> um, sure. But after that, like also he wasn't there I mean, he was there for a little bit one season. Um, so I don't really, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. We also had, you know, up, up three, one, you know, everybody has their, everybody has their perspectives and, you know, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but you know, up three, one, and, and we, I don't think we made the right adjustments. Uh, we didn't, we didn't focus. We didn't finish a game. Um, so a, a lack of a lack of concentration uh, in certain points, but um, there was a lot of different reasons. Uh, I'm I'm kind of glad you touched on earlier about 
towards the end there, everybody thought everybody didn't get along or there was some sort of animosity and, and the outside world thought, oh, you and CP don't like each other. And why do you think we on the outside sort of got that notion? What was that? Uh, you know, it's kind of what, kind of what you got to do. Um, <laughs> Who, me? No. You know, tell us why, Blake. Why, do you you tell, why did you do this, Blake? <laughs> you, you watch a clip, you see something, you run with it. It's a story, it gets clicks, it's great. Um, and then on top of that, like, you know, once we, we kind of, we all left and went our separate ways, like, first time I played against JJ, we got into it. First time I played against CP, we got into it. <laughs> like, it's just happened. Like, the, the nature of, like, bringing people who are, you know, uber competitive um, and, and, and even if they played together for a long time and now they're going against each other, you're still, you're still on the other team. It's all love after the game, but during the game, no. So like that, that feeds into it as well. So, um, you know, it's just an, it's a narrative and, and, and what's the better story? All these guys hate each other or yeah, they're great guys. They all get along. They just <laughs> didn't win. That's not a story. No, so, that's, no um, that's not fun. Yeah. No, that's, it that's is not fun it at is. all. Um, you were in LA when Donald Sterling was there and owned the team. We got this new show coming out on FX clipped. I kind of love that we're living this era of recent history being now made into shows. So a, will you watch this show and B have you seen the actor that they cast to play you? This dude named Austin Scott, who's listed at six, four, your thoughts. Uh, will I watch the show? I, yeah, I'll probably give it, a, I'll probably give it a watch. Um, uh, yeah, I actually, I've actually met the guy who played, uh, no, 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 sorry. Not the guy who played me. Um, I've seen pictures of him. I actually, one of my friends is friends with him. Um, oh, weird. I don't know. I mean, the casting. I, I don't think he looks uh, like you, but maybe they'll, <laughs> they'll maybe they'll figure something oh, out. Okay, this is a setup. All right. <laughs> I didn't know it's going to turn into a roast. All right, thanks, Michelle. All no, right, no, I don't, think, I, I don't think y'all look alike. That's, I didn't say, I don't want to be mean to anybody. I want to be mean to him, but he's like a Broadway yeah, awesome. guy. Who's hotter, job. Michelle? Say it with Who's your chest. Who's hotter, Austin or Blank? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Chandler. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's hard to cast a cast an NBA team, um, but yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see how the show is. We'll let the show do the talking. I like it. Like the Clippers are the Clippers are one of two franchises with zero retired jerseys. Now the Clippers, obviously, mm -hmm. they're moving to a new arena. There, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> How special would that be? And uh, obviously, you've earned that right to be the first one retired. That's something that you would look forward to. Would you enjoy, would you go to that ceremony? Because I know if someone yeah. shipped me from LA to Detroit, I, I still I hold grudges. I'd still, <laughs> I'd still be pissed. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's it's it's obviously a huge honor. I, I, yeah, I'm not I'm not I wouldn't turn that down. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. I, I, in my mind, I don't know that I do necessarily deserve. I haven't had any conversations about it. Uh, we all, like I, I keep saying, unfortunately, we, we ultimately didn't truly accomplish what we wanted. Um, but you do see it nowadays. Like guys, you know, just had a long, long career. I think Vince just is getting his number retired at uh, in in uh, New Jersey or with the Nets. Um, so I mean, yeah. you do see it, but um, it's not something that I, I would say I'm, I'm expecting. Um, if it happens, that, that's awesome. It's a, it's a, a huge honor and I, I greatly appreciate it, but, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Now, is it true that they actually had like a fake Jersey retirement for you before you yeah, got, I already got it. So <laughs> I, don't know if I need to show up, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious, man. Uh, we like walked into the Staples center and they did a whole, like a song, like a ceremony. I watched the jersey go up in the rafters, and then uh, you know, four months later, I was uh, buying See, one some clothes. Oh, I take the, I take the early flight home. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah, Blake, you will you will go down in history as one of the greatest dunkers of all time. I got to ask, now that it's all said and done, do you have a favorite? Is It It, it got to be the Moss Golf. It got to be the Kendrick Perkin, Perkins dunk, along with countless uh, memorable dunks that you've had over your career. What's what's a favorite? Yeah, I mean, I always I always say, like, the Kendrick Perkins, because you know how Perk is. Like, he was just, like, so – defense was his thing, and, and, like, he was so, like, oh. hell-bent on, on stopping people. Whoops. So, like, that one – 
that one always felt good because he just always felt like he like he, he was never giving you anything. He, he there was no what's up. There was no good game. There was no stay healthy after the game. Any of that. <laughs> um, it was just straight battle. So that, that one was that one was nice. One of my favorites. I don't know why it was like the one on uh, Gallo, uh, my rookie year. I don't know, just something about like the spin move and all that, like kind of putting everything together. Um, but yeah, I think I think those two those two stand out for me. Are those are those are the only two that stand out for you? I, 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 have one, I, was start, no, no, start I have one that's my I have one that's my personal favorite, Blake. Oh, uh, I, I knew you guys were gonna <laughs> <laughs> this up. God. Thank you. What am I oh, looking way, at? We did this oh. last week. We did this a couple of weekends ago in Vegas where this came up and literally I like pulled it up on my phone and I'm showing I'm just like, look, dude, what? he gets done too. Down. <laughs> Man. Feels like over I'm, the back. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it looks like, an off- looks like an we offensive take, foul to me. We take that one to Secaucus. It's not holding up. <laughs> <laughs> what a punk. Chandler, you were punchable <laughs> back then. You really were. I still am, Michelle. I still yeah, am. I know. You are. You're right. It can still happen, Michelle. It can still happen. We have, a, we have an hour before they get on the flight. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> BG, give us your Mount Rushmore. Obviously, Vince Carter. I mean, I think you've got to be up there as far as dunkers of all time. Who's your Mount Rushmore? I feel like you're obviously very well equipped to talk on something like that. Are we talking in-game or dunk contest or everything? Hmm. It can, everything. All of it. Um, yeah, Vince, Vince is, like, number one to me. Um... Like dunk contest, like you go like like Zach Levine, like Aaron Gordon's dunk contest was, I think it was one of the best ones since probably Vince. Um, in game dunkers, like man, like Sean Kemp, like I love the I love the way like Dominique dunked just because like he dunked so hard, um, and like as a big man, I, I'm obviously biased, but it's like it's just hard to like go up and make stuff look as acrobatic um as 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 some of these guys do that's why like Aaron Gordon to me is like like what he did was was so crazy because he's every every bit as tall as me he's probably six what is he six nine six ten two thirty um so I go Vince I gotta put MJ in there just because like the iconic like him really sort of like setting off the dunk contest with Dominique um I would go I would put Zach Levine up there and I would put um we got one more. Um, How many have we done? Yeah, you've uh, named seven. I mean, I feel like what? Vin, how many okay, Mount Rushmore's are we doing? Stay with me here, Vince, MJ, you, Dominique, Dominique and I'll say I'm not putting myself on my own Mount Rushmore. That's not. Aww. That's not it. Chandler, you can put him on yours. Oh, he's on mine. I still got a poster of him in my room. That's oh, that's weird. Um, okay, we got a, we have a huge debate going on. We've had it going on, and then Austin Rivers did it again, and it's never going to die. And Chandler loves this argument, so we're going to get it from you here. NBA players to the NFL more likely, or NFL players to the NBA? Who's got the better shot? Uh, I mean, again, we're all biased, but I think NBA to NFL. Now, that's not saying like if you had to pick an NBA player to go play quarterback, it's not happening. Even defense, like there's so many schemes. There's so much like information that they've learned over time that they can read and react so quickly that no matter how much training you do, we're not going to be able to go recreate that. Now, if you're saying like wide receiver or tight end, I think, I think that's very possible. I mean, I think I saw Austin made the, the, the comment after he made the initial comment of like, we've seen it happen with college basketball players who weren't going to go play in the NBA. They went and played in the NFL. So I think 40 is a stretch. Um, and could it be all positions? Absolutely not. Could you go field an uh, NFL team of NBA guys? Absolutely not. Like, there's too many decisions to be made quickly. Even offensive linemen, those guys, like, they speak a different language. They know offense. They know defense. We're too far behind on that. But if you had to go pick some guys to go play tight end, wide receiver, like I said, yes, that could happen. Again, on the basketball side, if you put an NFL player in the NBA, it's the same thing that I'm talking about with quarterbacks and defense. There's too much information happening too fast um, for them to truly be able to keep up. People a lot of times think like, well, if I you know, I can go make a corner three. Yeah, but you have to be able to guard somebody. You have to be able to dribble. Right. You have to be able to pass. You have to be able to do all these things. So it's the same thing for both sports. I just think that there's a couple positions maybe in the NFL that it could that it could work out in. 
Yeah, like my whole point is if, if if you give Blake Prime, Blake Griffin, Zion, these guys, if you give them a year or so to train as, to be a tight end, they'd be unbelievable. But you put NFL tight ends in an NFL, NBA game right now, they would look lost. Blake can play a couple possessions in an NFL game and catch a ball, run, cut, move. They can't just like come into an NBA game and hit a step back and like guard, guard somebody. It's it's <laughs> it's a silly argument, but it's brilliant because it went viral and now everyone's talking about it. But it's it's yep, silly. Yep. Blake, we just saw the Tom Brady roast, someone who's done their fair share of roasting. Is there an NBA <laughs> player? I feel like LeBron's kind of the obvious answer, but is there an NBA mm-hmm. player that you would like to see get roasted next? Current or former? Um, current or former. I mean, Shaq hasn't done one, has he? Shaq would be no, a great be one. Good. He's been he'd in be roasts. I don't he... know if he was actually roasted, but I know he's been part of some. Yeah, former, I You're think good. I would. Uh, Chuck, Chuck. I think Chuck, a former, he, former player would be Chuck. It. Current player, I mean, besides LeBron being like, you know, the Tom Brady, like the GOAT. Uh, but do you think he could handle right it? Because they got pretty, they'll, no. they'll get him. No, I don't, no, no, no. I, don't think, I don't think LeBron would ever do it. I, <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, it, it takes it takes, it takes some <laughs> guts to go up there and just like Big put ones. everything out there. <laughs> Um, I'm, sh- I'm shocked that Tom Brady did it. Like, well, why do you do so it? So is he's he awesome. now, apparently. He's got regrets oh, yeah. now. I'm like, you can't have regrets three days later. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Didn't he get he $30 he million? Dollars? Didn't he get $30 million or something to do it? Like, I've heard all kinds of numbers. I don't think so. I heard, I've, I've heard some heard numbers that I, that I trust, but I don't think it was close <laughs> to 30. Reporting. Yeah. 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 But it's, it was, it's not, it was My a nice sources, check. Hold on. What's that? Yeah. No, it wasn't 30. <laughs> Yeah, Chandler, what are you just throwing 30 around like it's nothing? What's wrong oh, with you? What you next, next show is going to be 50 million. I know, yeah. 100 million. He <laughs> owns that place. Dude, he's <laughs> I just like him on this one. Yeah. Just off the <laughs> roads. Okay, we have Paul Shear on the show occasionally, and he's sort of become inadvertently our uh, Space Jam expert. <laughs> well, I don't know how he got that title, and it sucks for him, but he did tell us about a table read that you guys had. And then he goes mm-hmm. on to tell us that he thinks Space Jam's not a good movie. So once and for all, is Space Jam a good movie? Uh, the original Space Jam? Sure. Yeah. Because he yeah, went off on both, movie. but yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. I mean, it's a, it's a, let's, let's be clear, it's a kid's movie. And it, it gave you everything you wanted. As a basketball, as a kid who played basketball, and a kid who loved cartoons, like it gives you the possibility of like, oh, I can go live in that world. I, I like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what he, I don't know what Paul wants from Space Jam, man. Like, not everything can be, you know, critically acclaimed. Uh, now, I, 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 I do think it's a good movie, but I also, it's been a little bit since I've seen it, I guess, and I'm sure there's certain things that don't hold up. But man, had some good actors. MJ did a great job. Um, right? I had a birthday party. My, I think my eighth. Eight year eight year birthday party was uh, Space Jam themed. I had a Space Jam nice. cake. I rented Space Jam. My friends went to the park. We played basketball, and then we watched Space Jam. So, uh, yeah, you know, you know what? Fuck you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. My my thirty sixth birthday is going to be Space Jam. Yeah, Paul, <laughs> <laughs> you're the worst, Paul. Cheer. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back tomorrow. That being said, gentlemen. I'm going to wish you luck on your weekend. Uh, Don't do anything that Shams wouldn't do. Uh, That list is very long. And have fun. (laughs) Thanks, Blake. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. See you in the flash. We'll be back in a minute. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Well, we had a little Mavs thunder last night. Chandler, you were right. Dallas went on to get this one. 3-2 series lead for him. Luka's triple-double leads him. He had 31, 10, and 11 assists. It's his sixth career playoff triple-double. SGA had 30 and 8. And look, before the game, they ran off a laundry list of injuries that Luka has been dealing with for quite some time now. And yet, has a game like this. I mean, how impressive is that? What were you? I couldn't hear you. You said I was what, Michelle? You weren't wrong. <laughs> uh, no, this was this was an unbelievable yeah, performance. He, he, <laughs> Shut uh, up, Shops. Don't don't you come on. <laughs> this gave me this gave me the same not as crazy, but this gave me the Jokic feeling as the night before, where when Luca gets in this rhythm and he's hitting his step back left and he's getting to his spots. You can't guard him. And Lou Dort, to me, he's really blown up. His value has gone so high up this just this series alone, how physical, how great he's been defending Luka. And still 75, 80% of the possessions last night, it wasn't enough. 
And Luca is just so big. He's so talented. He picked his spots. He got people involved. This was an unbelievable. And you know he's banged up. The guy's got like four or five injuries on the injury report. Uh, and he still had a gutsy performance. He got a little bit from everybody too. Can't be speak enough about Derek Jones, how he gave him that boost early on. And, and once once the Mavs, if, if they're defending like this and they're giving up 92 points, they're hard to beat because they're so good offensively. They move the ball. They surround Luka with these shooters. So when they're defending and they're locking in, giving the same effort on both sides, they're a really, really impressive team. But Luka was tremendous. He dominated this game from start to finish. They had zero answers for him. They really didn't, Shams. And they've also, this has been the cool part about Dallas. They've had multiple dudes step up. And uh, I'm thinking, who's the X factor moving forward in your mind? Michelle, that's exactly why this team has a chance in these playoffs. And Chandler's been on it for months now. I don't know if it's his, if it's Dallas fandom or what it was, but like <laughs> this is the deepest team Luka Doncic has had since being in Dallas. P.J. Washington, and last night, to me, the X factor, and I think the X factor in this series, and moving forward, potentially Derek Jones Jr., 19 points, three threes, he swung game five to me. And over the last two games, you, you see his stats, 18 points a game, two rebounds, almost three blocks, 68% from the field, 40% from three. This is someone that was known, Michelle, he was known as a dunker. He was known as a, as a guy that's athletic. But he's turned himself into this player that can defend one to five. He can spot up and shoot. He can slash with aggression. He can attack closeouts. He's, he can be a rim roller, or a, a, a pick and roll guy, pick and pop guy. He's, he's become instrumental in how they play and you have to give nico harrison a lot of credit he was a home run signing they got him on a minimum contract he was deciding between boston and dallas he ends up going to dallas and now he's starting jason kid trusts him he's gonna be a free agent this summer the mavs want to keep him desperately but they know he's gonna have a massive market going into this offseason a guy that can nice. play so many different different positions and do so many things at a high level that is uh what a lovely offseason look forward to. All right, Thunder bench Josh Giddy last night. Chandler, he had before that started 229 straight games in both regular and postseason play. Um, I guess hindsight being 2020 is an easier conversation, but right move, wrong move. What did you think when they decided to do that? Yeah, I didn't love I didn't love the move. You know, why, why fix what's not broken, right? And their starting lineup has been very productive. And yeah, he struggled. It's known he can't shoot. Defenses are playing off him. But he's still a very smart basketball player with his size and his ability to pass the ball. He still can set guys up. He's still great in transition. He can finish. So I think to mix up the rotation now for all the success they've had, listen, they're the number one seed. It's two to two going back home and you switch up the starting lineup. I didn't agree with that from the coach of the year, but Isaiah Joe has been giving them a spark. He's been shooting the three ball very well, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to Gideon because, because again, that's been, that works that, that uh, let them play off, let them play off him. Because when you play off a of guy, it's like guarding Rondo. You almost want to pressure Josh Giddy. You want to pressure Rondo. You want to pressure Draymond because they're too good at passers when you play back off them and give them too much space to operate. So I think he's, I think he's, listen, he has struggled offensively, but that's not his game. Let him do what he does best. And he fits with that starting five better and let Isaiah Joe come off. Isaiah Joe wasn't, Isaiah Joe wasn't ready for the moment. He, he nope. was he was all over the place. He'd go back to getting. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back. Run Wrap things back. up. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. We have 15 seconds to say goodbye. So I say goodbye, Shams. Bye bye. I can't wait to hang out with you guys next week. <laughs> Don't get arrested, Chandler. Be safe. We love you. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back.